as it turns out, he did have an attack. A panic attack, they call it. So the doctor said for him to stay in bed and rest a few days and get rid of anything in his life that was causing him to be upset. <laughs> so we figured the only thing to do was to have him stay with us. <laughs> you know that song, Over the river and through the woods to grandmother's house we go. It's like a happy song, isn't it? Those people going to see their grandparents. They're singing, they're dancing. So, I got you a mess card. <laughs> 7.30, St. Anne's, a week from Tuesday. They're gonna have to name this church after me pretty soon. Who starred with Grace Kelly in High Noon? Oh, that is a nice one. That actor. Right, the one with the ears. Oh, I'd always like to him. <laughs> That's right. Go again. Wait, Grand. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it says on the back of the card. The one with the ears. <laughs> ah, but uh, I know who they mean. But they have to tell you who they mean. Oh. That's the whole point uh, of the game. Uh, That's uh, right. Uh, uh, really? No, Jimmy Stewart dated the, was married to the woman with the hair. No, the wacky guy with the nose was married to the woman oh. with the hair. <laughs> that was the other woman with the hair. Jimmy Stewart was married to the woman with the hair with the face. No, didn't the woman with the face marry the guy with the face? No, that was the guy with the feet. <laughs> and then who dated Lana Turner? That uh, gangster she killed, uh, somebody, somebody. No, no, her daughter killed the gangster with the butcher knife. Right, the daughter with the butcher knife. That's right. right. Oh, that's very nice. That's right. Right. What was the question again? <laughs> what was it like to leave your family? Why, uh, why do you want to know this, Nicky? He was a fisherman, wasn't he? <sighs> why did he make you leave? Well, you know the problem with old stories, Nicky. You tell them and you realize people don't change. They keep doing the same things over and over again. When I was a little boy, uh, every Christmas morning on the, on the cobblestones in the town, there would appear this, uh, this sea of vendors there, their carts covered in toys. And what I remember most was the colors, the bright reds and oranges and blues, like a rainbow of toys. And my father would pick me up and carry me to the first cart, and he would point to some tiny little toy, and I would point to the biggest and the most colorful, but he would shake his head no, and uh, we'd move on to the next. And I would point to another beautiful toy, and again he would shake his head no. And this happened over and over and over again until we got to the last cart. And then he would buy me some little gray toy I barely wanted. And I would begin to cry. And he'd pick me up and carry me back inside our house. I always resented him for that. Hated him for that. Well, when I was 14, my father put me on a boat to America and said, 
Goodbye, this is where you're gonna live. I was 14. I hated him for that too. Not long after that, my father got caught up in a fishing net they were throwing in the water. He hit his head on the side of the boat and uh, they never found him. Exactly eight years after my father sent me away, I returned to my hometown so that my mother and my sisters could meet my new family. It was during the holidays and on Christmas morning, I picked your mother up in my arms and I carried her outside. And there they were, all those vendors, like they never left, with their blue and red and beautiful toys. And your mother would point to the brightest and the prettiest. And every one she pointed at, I bought for her. <laughs> When we returned home with this uh, rainbow of toys, my mother took one look and she said, that's what your father wished he could do for you. But we barely had enough for food on Christmas and that's why he had. That's why he had to send you away. So that you could make for yourself a life that he could never hope to give to you. I always thought that my father was a bastard who wouldn't give me anything. As it turns out, he was giving me everything he had. You're going away, Nikki. You're leaving, aren't you? When I wake up each morning, that I forget that I'm sick. It's like a little gift I get at the start of each day. That night, I told my Emma. The first time I cried was when she began to cry. I made a promise not to tell anyone. That's my job. It would be so selfish of me to tell them. So selfish. But when you get to be my age, you realize what matters is family. What matters is family, and what's in Seattle. Just some job. Your grandfather has something to tell you. Emma. No. He has to tell you, Nikki. What is it, Gramps? Is something wrong? Nikki, what I have to say, what I have to tell you. But remember the other day when I was telling you I was remembering your Uncle Nikki? Yeah. Well, I was thinking about him, cuz. But I was thinking about the day he said goodbye. You know, he would be in his 50s now, but I can only see him as young. I still think I should see him as older, having lived the life he should have lived. I can just see him as this young, perfect man in his uniform, awaiting, waving goodbye. And I knew how dangerous Korea was, Nikki. I knew. And still, I just stood there and I waved goodbye. But inside, inside, I was hoping, wishing so hard that I could think of something to say or do, anything, anything at all, that would make him stay. Well, there was nothing, Nikki. Nothing. And now you are leaving, Nikki. And. Nikki, let me ask you a question. And tell me the truth, Nikki. Tell me the truth. I will. Okay. The other day, when you had your attack and you were yelling, you said something about finding about who you are, what your life was about. Oh, Gramps, I was upset and I didn't mean what I was saying. <laughs> the one thing I know is when people get upset, that's when they mean the things they say. What did you mean by that? I don't know. I guess it's 
my whole life I've spent here with you guys, and it's been wonderful. I mean, it's all been wonderful, and I am grateful. But I just don't need it anymore. I'm sorry if that sounds selfish, but I just don't. There's a real opportunity for me in Seattle, a chance for me to make my life something of my own doing. So Seattle, then, this is not just about a job. This is something you feel you have to do to make your life, to be happy. Yes. I'm sorry, but yes. And you know this. You know this as much as you know anything. Absolutely. Seattle, then. OK. Gramps, what you had to tell me. No, nothing. <laughs> but you said. What I had to tell you, Nikki, was what I had to say is I will always be with you. So you'll be good. I caught my flight, and six hours later I was in Seattle for my new life. And two days later, a 15-pound lasagna arrived for me in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my new job loved it. More responsibility, so more challenging. And within a few weeks, I was dating this girl from the accounting office named Teresa. And I knew right away she was something special. Two months later, I returned to my grandparents for the funeral of my grandfather, Nunzio. He died from prostate cancer, which had spread into his liver and kidneys. My grandmother told me that they had known about this before I moved, but they didn't feel it was appropriate to burden me with it. Burden me? How could they have said nothing? Nothing at all. I mean, if they had said something, no question, I would have stayed. A couple of years after Nicholas left, my Frank and my baby passed on. And for nearly a year after that, Emma and I had dinner together every day. Until she too suffered a severe stroke. Not long after, I achieved what my grandparents always considered to be the greatest accomplishment known to man. I married Tanga Familia. And now when I sit home in Portland with my wife, Teresa, awaiting the birth of our first child, my mind often wanders back to those last few weeks spent with my grandparents. And I wish I could neatly sum up who they were and what they meant to me, and how they fit into the puzzle of my life. But one thing I know is that my grandparents worked every day of their lives to ensure that their family would be better educated and more successful than they were. But what they could not foresee happening was that they would elevate me to such a place that they would never be able to comprehend who I had become or how I would continue their legacy. And looking back at them, even I only saw a vague reflection of myself. Still, they let me go. They got me to laugh. And to this day, I still get great food in the mail. <laughs> Everything came beautiful, didn't it, Nicholas?